Do you know the YouTube channel called Dead Ed? You know the guys who regularly produce high effort educational content for us to watch free of charge. Well, seven years ago they made a video that I now hate. So fuck them I guess. What up? It's your boy Daniel. Do you prefer living over dying? So do I. We have so much in common. Daniel get to the point? Okay. In 2013, YouTube channel called Ted Ed released a series of videos nitpicking popular comic book superpowers. And while I couldn't give less of a shit about invisibility or super speed, one superpower that I care deeply about is immortality. It has always been a dream of mine, and will stay like that until it becomes true, or I die. Those who find this ambition of mine unrealistic should do some fucking research. Life extension and cure for aging are things that are achievable by humanity in my lifetime, and probably yours too. And when you can extend your life, it's only a matter of time when only things like injury, hypoxia or starvation can bring you down. This goal is consistent with most people's moral systems, since most people value well-being, and there is no well-being without being which for us humans equals to living. So with that out of the way, what is the issue with the video? Well, it's a fucking mess. First of all, they never actually define the type of immortality they're trying to shit on. Is it absolute or biological immortality? Do you regenerate or not? Do you still age for some fucking reason or not? We may never know. Second of all, their points are shit. I will now go through Ted Ed's entire video to demonstrate that. Immortality. In movies, kings are always searching for the secret to immortality. But is immortality really a good thing? Yes, it is. In fact, it is essential if you care about well-being. I'll say it once again, there is no well-being without being. And the only known way for a human person to be is through living. To a 10-year-old boy, one year is the same as 10% of his life. To his 40-year-old mother, one year is merely 2.5% of her life. And to his 145-year-old great-grandfather, one year is only 0.69% of his life. It might seem like the narrator is leading to some groundbreaking point, but in reality the point he makes next is kinda shit. The same year, 365 days, can feel differently to different people. If we live until we're 82, that's about 30,000 days. If this boy lives for 30,000 years, a year to him could feel like a day. And how the fuck would that be possible? The problem with this point is that it's based entirely on speculations. No proper scientific consensus has been established in this area. Because everybody has ideas, but nobody actually has any definitive proof. However, there has been an experimental study showing that old people between 60 and 80 tend to significantly underestimate time intervals, saying 3 minutes have passed when it was actually 3 minutes and 40 seconds on average, compared to young people between 19 and 24 with their 3 minutes and 3 seconds average. Do you know how most researchers explain that? They have linked it to degenerative changes in the aging brain. And I bet you can guess why most educated people don't like to project such things too far into the future. Because if your brain keeps degenerating for too long, you die. And guess what? The most realistically achievable type of immortality is centered around stopping your aging process and then reverting you to a comfortable biological age of around 25, when your body just stopped developing. So this whole aging bullshit wouldn't affect you anyway. And if this boy's emotions sustain through the potential boredom of living for millions of years, he might become extremely lonely and sad, knowing he has and always will outlive everyone he has ever loved. Potential boredom? Potential boredom. Potential is a very useful word when you want to bullshit your audience without actually lying. First of all, there's literally nothing that suggests living forever is somehow boring. People who are saying that are either playing dumb or they are actually dumb. What is your age? 
During all those years, have you been able to find ways to spend your time and entertain yourself? Probably yes. Maybe you have even wasted a decent chunk of your time and now regret not spending it on something useful. You see, the biggest problem people have is not the abundance of time. It's the lack of time. And immortality is a great way to solve this problem. Aside from that, humans are coming up with new ways to spend time like every single day. Because, you know, if you become immortal, progress doesn't just stop for no reason. And one more thing. Imagine how many more friends you're going to make every century. Assuming everyone becomes immortal, which is the most believable scenario. And what is required to maintain friendship? Time. You have to spend time with your friends. Because if you don't, they will feel neglected and your friendship will eventually die. So you cannot really have too much time after all, right? As for his next point, becoming sad because everyone dies, it's simple. Just make everyone immortal. How hard can it be? You literally have unlimited time to figure it out. Not to mention that in any realistic scenario, everybody is going to be immortal in the first place. And you're most probably not even going to be the first one in line. But even if, for some stupid reason, you are the only one and everybody around you is dropping like flies, then at the very least, you're not dead, which is awesome. But what if everyone were immortal? Well, first off, Earth is only so big, so where would we all live? Another non-issue. First of all, if humanity achieves immortality, procreation loses most of its purpose. Because, you know, everyone's young and not dying. So birth rates are gonna drop dramatically. But even for the leftover growth, there are obvious solutions ranging from parenthood regulations to space colonization. Take your pick. Do you remember what you did last year? What about when you were five? I remember the most significant events from last year. But I mostly don't remember how it felt like being a child with an underdeveloped brain. How much of your past have you forgotten? I have forgotten most of it. And I'm fine with that. That's just how our brain works. They erase what is unused and they keep the memories you actually do use. If you're having trouble remembering what you did when you were five, how will you remember what happened if you were alive a thousand years ago? A million years ago! Okay, first. Not having clear memories of your early childhood tells you nothing about your memory a thousand years from now. Your brain was still growing. Second, I don't need to remember everything. And I'm pretty sure I would still keep the most important details. Third, in case I really needed to become a walking archive, I could just use one of several solutions available to me in the near future. Genetic modifications, neural implants, external memory banks, etc. Like I said previously, technological advancement doesn't stop just because immortality happened to you. Most people don't give a shit. Well, a decent chunk of them still want to make the world a better place, which also benefits you. We don't remember every single detail of our past because our brains have a limited capacity and we replace useless memories like middle school locker combinations with relevant information. Good. I am glad our brains are capable of that. Yes, as of now we do have limited memory capacity, which kinda sucks, but I'm personally fine with having useless memories replaced by something useful. If this immortal boy finds a companion to fall in love with once every hundred years, he would have 10,000 girlfriends in a million years. And how many of those 10,000 girls' names will he be able to remember? I don't care. Really? Is this supposed to be a valid reason to choose death over life? Forgetting names. You can write them down, I guess. Who cares? Also, cool hypothetical, Ted Ed. Good job pointing out minor inconveniences that are never going to happen to anyone. This changes what a meaningful relationship means, doesn't it? Yeah, sure it does. And it's only reasonable to be afraid of change and progress and future in general. We as a species are clearly headed towards nothing but moral degeneracy and flying cars. And I only like my cars earthbound. 
emitting cancer gases into my face. What the fuck is this point? Human relationships evolve with time. So fucking what? If anything, it's good. I would like to remind you guys that things like proper sexual consent and LGBT rights are relatively new inventions on the scale of human history. And not too long ago, women used to be forced to marry their rapists. So yeah, I believe that change is good. And I would easily pick adaptation over death. Another tricky thing about immortality, human beings have not always looked the same. This can be explained by Darwin's theory of evolution. For instance, if women find taller men more attractive, then more tall men would mate and have children, putting more tall genes in the gene pool. That means in the next generation, more children will have the genes to be taller. Repeat that process for a million years, and the average height will be a lot taller than the average height today. Assuming there's no natural disaster that wipes out all the tall people, our ancestors were short, hairy apes. We still have body hair, but we don't look like apes anymore. If you're the only person who is immortal, while everyone else keeps evolving generation after generation, you will eventually look quite different than the people who surround you. Hi, how you doing? If one of our ancestors' apes is still alive today, how many people will make friends with it instead of calling the Museum of Natural History ugh? So, it took them over 150 words to formulate this painfully stupid point which makes it the most elaborate one so far. Which is also pretty ironic, because it's the easiest one to counter, with just two words. Genetic engineering. Let's face it, natural selection sucks. As a mechanism of improvement, it is unreliable, it takes a shitload of time to show any effect, and in general, it can go fuck itself, because we no longer require its services. Genetic engineering is going to become our new method of artificial evolution. More reliable, more efficient, and fast. And it's also probably going to become a method in which humanity achieves immortality. Unless someone ruins it for us. But that's a whole other topic. So, to sum it up, no, you will not look like a monkey to other people even if you're for some reason the only immortal person after a million years. You can always just modify your appearance. And one more physical consideration for immortality. Scars. Uh, nope. Not a consideration. Scars can be healed. Go to Wikipedia, there's like a whole bunch of methods. And all the missing organs and limbs and whatever can be replaced as well, since we are talking about being immortal in the distant future. After all, immortality doesn't automatically translate to invincibility. It just means you cannot die. Does it? Because when I say immortality, I usually mean biological immortality, aka non-aging. But I have no idea what they mean. If you cannot die, you must be at least partially invincible. Because what if someone takes out your brain and blends it into a smoothie? Are you still alive? If yes, then how? Magic? I mean, I would still take that over dying any day of the week, but I would also really appreciate some clarity from our educators. Anyway, after that the narrator starts explaining how you're going to lose literally every part of your body and how miserable it will be, which I have already addressed several times, so I'm just going to speed it up. But it doesn't guarantee what condition you'll be alive in. So, look at your body and count how many scars you have. If you have made this many permanent scars within your life, imagine how much damage you would have if you were 1,000 years old. Now, there are approximately 185,000 amputation-related hospital discharges every year in the U.S. These injuries are due to accidents or illnesses. Certainly, the percentage is low comparing to the total population if you only live for 100 years. However, if you've been alive for over 1 million years, the odds of still having all your limbs are pretty slim. What about little accessories like your eyes, your nose, your ears, fingers, or toes? What about your teeth? What are the odds of you keeping your dental health for 100 years? 1,000 years? 1 million years? You might end up looking like a horribly scuffed up potato head with missing pieces and dentures. So, are you sure you want to live for Forever. Yes, absolutely, without any hesitation whatsoever. So yeah, that was terrible. I'm not blaming them for being unable to find any good arguments against not dying, since you know there aren't any, but I am blaming them for making this video. I don't think it was made at gunpoint, so uh, they could have just chosen another superpower. But then again, why would anyone watch Ted Ed nitpick superpowers when we have Because Science? Last time I checked, he did not shit on immortality. Oh. Oh, fuck you, Kyle. In case you're still wondering about the title, this is what I meant by betrayal. 
when you're looking for the term immortality on YouTube, you often don't get to see awesome videos by Kurzgesagt or CGP Grey. Instead, you see this fucking death propaganda. Well, around half the population in countries such as uh, America is still opposed to not even immortality, just life extension treatments. Aging is a disease that has killed the billions, and we must treat it as such. We need more people talking not just about the benefits of immortality, but also about what it actually means, all to help others realize they need it. You think some authority figure will take care of this for you? No, they won't. If looking at global politics for the past several years has taught me anything, it's that most politicians are fucking retarded. So you have to figure out what's good for you yourself, and then start demanding it. No one is going to change laws and prioritize appropriate research unless lots of people say they want that. And one thing I know for sure is, I don't want to fucking die. And I hope same goes for you. So we better spread awareness faster than the shitheads can spread misinformation. Have a long life.